Now, before we write any code and explore any special Django features, let's dive into one simple yet important question. What is data? Now, of course, data in the end is, well, all the, the values we're working with in our application. Uh, for example, that could be the monthly challenges we have, that could be the products we have in a store or the blog posts we have in a blog. That would be data. If a user inserts something in a field, like for example, his or her email address, that would also be data. So that's what data is. It's the values we work with in our application. But we can actually differentiate between different kinds of data. For example, there is temporary data, semi-persistent data, and persistent data. These are not official classifications. These are just some different categories I came up with here. And I'm going to explain which kind of data goes into which category in just a second. And let's therefore maybe start with temporary data. What is temporary data? Well, that would, for example, be the user input in some form or maybe a selected blog post, which we selected by entering a specific URL. This is data which we need to work with. We want to process that input. We want to process that selected blog post and fetch the appropriate blog post from a database, for example, and show it to the user with help of a template. But this data is temporary because it's not important in the future. What the user entered into a form might be saved in a database and become persistent, but that's then in the context of a bigger entry which we write to the database. Just reading the user input values from a form, field by field, is temporary data which we only need in that moment where we process the form. So that data is used immediately and then lost thereafter. And of course, we often have such temporary data in applications that we might be building. And such temporary data is then just stored in memory, so in variables. We extract some data, store it in a variable inside of a method or a function, do something with it throughout that function, and then once we're done with the function execution, the variable is no longer referenced, it's no longer used anywhere else in the application, and hence it's automatically cleared after some time. So that would be temporary data. And this kind of data is important, and that's actually the kind of data we worked with thus far in the course, because we only worked with variables up to this point. Now, the problem is that not everything should be temporary data. For example, we might have some data which I like to call semi-persistent data. An example would be the user authentication status. If a user logged in, we might want to save the fact that the user is logged in. We want to save that somewhere, but of course a user may log out in the future, in which case this data is not needed anymore, or we might want to automatically log out a user after a couple of minutes or hours. Think of online banking where you are logged out after 15 minutes or so. So that is data which is kind of persistent, which we don't just need once and instantly, but which we might need in the future as well, but where it is okay if it's lost, or where we even might want to clear it deliberately after a certain time span, because it can be recreated, for example, if a user logs back in. This kind of data could be stored in the browser or in some temporary files. So in a place where the storage might be cleared, for example, the browser might clear its in-browser storage if it needs to free up space or for security reasons after a certain time span, but it's not cleared instantly after the data was used or after we're done with a specific task. So we have certain storage mechanisms like cookies or in the browser, the local storage, which we can access through JavaScript or temporary files, which we might write to the server, which are there and which persist, but which ultimately might be cleared by us or automatically. And that's this semi-persistent kind of data I like to talk about. But of course, in most websites we're building, we also have real persistent data. 
So data which must not be lost and which should never be cleared unless we explicitly want to delete some kind of data. And an example here would be blog posts, orders, products, users, you name it. There's a long list of data which makes up the heart of our website, which our website might be all about. For example, an online shop is all about products and orders in the end. And this data, of course, must not be lost. It should be stored forever. It must not be lost unless we explicitly want to delete one item. Now, for example, if we cancel an order, we might want to delete that order from wherever it's stored, but it shouldn't be auto-deleted randomly or anything like that. So we have such persistent data which is super important and which must not be cleared. And this kind of data should typically be stored in a database. In the end, that's the same as storing it in a file, you could say, but of course databases then provide us a more convenient way of inserting and deleting and querying data, and they give us certain optimizations to retrieve data in a faster way, and so on. And therefore, these are the three categories of data I like to think about, and of course, we need to be able to work with all three of them. Now, we're going to take a look at semi-persistent data later in the course, once we dive into sessions. We already had a look at temporary data, we used it throughout this course thus far. And now in this module, I want to focus on persistent data. I want to focus on storing data in a database and getting data from there and updating data there and deleting it because that is a crucial thing you will need to do in basically any website. And hence, of course, you should know how to do it with Django.